Welcome to this online worship opportunity coming to you from your family at the Neighborhood Church. Now I need to acknowledge that I am not in the church as you all are not in the church, but we are still all part of the church family. I'm coming to you from northern Minnesota at our cabin in the North Woods here where uh, we've had weather that's been up and down. But I want to welcome you all to this opportunity when we can come together through the technology of the internet and all the things that allow us to do this so that we can be together and truly worship God. Today is a special day because it is Father's Day and so we want to congratulate all those who are fathers and to say we want to wish you a very, very happy Father's Day. In fact, we're doing something with the children in our church school. We're encouraging them to uh, get a t-shirt, uh, a blank t-shirt, and uh, have their children make a handprint on the back and fill that in uh, with the words that say, Dad needs a pat on the back, or it could be granddad needs a pat on the back. But uh, we think it'll be a fun way to uh, let our dads know how much they're appreciated. So a very happy Father's Day to all who are dads today. And, and again, we are so grateful for those who play that role for us uh, throughout our life. We turn now to uh, a time of wanting to worship God when we can open our hearts to the spirit and presence of God. And uh, wherever you are and whatever you're doing at this point, I hope you can just relax and uh, take a deep breath. Let the spirit of God come in and let yourself know that you are truly loved, that you are loved beyond measure and beyond imagination, and that we are all in God's loving hands. So we remember the words of scripture when it says that this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us truly worship God now as we hear our prelude. Now let us all join together in praying our opening prayer. When the path is tangled with briars and the going seems all but impossible, we need a reclaimed sense of your presence in the midst of the journey 
O God of possibilities. Draw near to us in this hour of inner reflection and outward praise that we might be renewed in the way that is Christ. Amen. Our scriptural passage from today is from the book of Romans, chapter 7, verses 14 through 25. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am of the flesh, sold into slavery under sin. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good. But in fact, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me, that is, in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want. But the evil I do not want is what I do. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be the law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my innermost self. But I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells within my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with my mind, I am a slave to the law of God, but with my flesh, I am a slave to the law of sin. And may the Lord grant us meaning and understanding to this, the reading of the Holy Word. For those of you who caught last week's sermon, you know we discussed the rains of creation and how at times it can rain a whole bunch. And we especially focused on the reign of God and doing God's justice. I have learned that when dealing with justice and doing what's right, it is always good to take the compensatory look at our own propensity for doing wrong, such that our quest for righteousness doesn't inadvertently become self-righteousness. The rain here in Minnesota has caused everything to be growing and turn green, including the weeds. In fact, at times, it seems it's just weeds, weeds, and more weeds. 
I've already mowed twice, and it's mostly been weeds. And it was raining just earlier today, and it's supposed to rain again in another hour or so. Today's theme, as it applies to our spiritual lives, has to do with sin. Dealing with sin, as I've discovered, takes an entire lifetime. You've seen those signs in front of churches that display helpful one-line messages. One such church put out this announcement. Tired of sinning? Come inside. A few days later, someone scrawled below that message. If not, call 555-9267. The point is, sin always lies close at hand, and it is something we struggle with all our lives. For Paul put it this way in verses 18 and 19 of our Romans text, which Michael read for us. For I know that nothing good dwells within me, that is, in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. You may not be dealing with any particular sin in your life right now, but if you are honest, there are times in dealing with your spiritual self when you wonder, what's with all the weeds? We have lots of perennial plants and flowering bushes around our cabin, and it appears they are going to be blossoming soon. But the weeds around them have been flourishing too. Weeds siphon off nutrients and water that are needed for flowering plants and fruit-bearing bushes and trees. And for those of you who were listening last week, you may recall that I said our life and faith is connected to all life. Weeds are strong survivors, and no matter what we do to try to get rid of them, they usually have a way of coming back. Oh, and one other thing about weeds. When you look at the world through the eyes of a child, you know that kids often mistake weeds for good plants and flowers. We're blessed to have our two-year-old grandson, Elias, with us, and as we were walking just a few days ago, he reached down and plucked some pretty yellow dandelions. And lello is his favorite color. He doesn't understand what happens with a dandelion in very short order and how it turns to more and more seeds of weeds. But weeds, no matter how seemingly pretty, never bear fruit or flowers that last. A man walked from New York City to San Francisco, and he was asked what his biggest hurdle or struggle was. And he said that the toughest part of the trip wasn't traversing the steep slopes of the mountains or crossing hot, barren stretches of desert. He said, the thing that came the closest to defeating me was the sand in my shoes. It is not usually what we think of as the big sins that defeat us. Most Christians fall to sins that they do not think are very big. Little weeds don't seem like much of a threat to our plants and flowers, but give them time and they can take over. So what's with all the weeds? There are many definitions for sin. The one which has been most helpful to me is this. Sin is the denial of relationality. Sin is anything that breaks a relationship, anything that alienates or separates. And who among us has not made wrong decisions, bad choices, said things we've regretted? And further still, I know in my own life, I have done things unintentionally and unknowingly that have caused a breakdown in relationality. In verse 15, Paul says, I do not understand my own actions, but the accurate rendering of the original Greek is really this. I do not know what I am bringing about. How true and how confusing that can be. Now I need to make it clear. I do not believe tragedy and misfortune are the result of sin, but I am convinced there is always a loss or a cost when we break relationality. And we are talking about more than sins of the flesh. Things like putting others in the wrong, controlling, manipulating, backbiting, gossiping, lying, pride, 
and self-righteousness can be even more destructive than sins of the flesh. Yet, yet it is human nature to want to focus on others and the sins of others to pass on the responsibility for something and pass it off onto them. Sin is like quicksand. The more energy spent trying to get out of one's own, the deeper one sinks. Friends, when it comes to our spiritual weeds, we need someone to help us. And fortunately, sin is not the final word. To return to our text from Paul again, for I delight in the law of God in my inmost self. But I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched person that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Thanks be to God through Christ who restores relationality with God, with others, and even with ourselves. In closing, a few lines of doggerel I penned. I mess up and sin with hardly a grin and then turn around and do it again. I feel much chagrin and turn myself in to the Lord who is both above and within. God says I'm okay just follow Christ's way. Let it go now. It's time to begin. So, what's with all the weeds? Because Lord knows we have plenty and weeds will always be around. But weeds are never the final word and neither is sin. Thanks be to God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who indeed frees us from sin, and restores relationality. Amen.
now we enter into our time of prayer, when we can share with God issues that lay deep within us. So let us pray. Gracious and forgiving God, we come to you in prayer today to thank you for your constant and eternal willingness to forgive us for our sins. We understand that frequently sin can be defined as missing the mark or falling out of a relationship with you. And in the times in which we now live, both are so easy to do, and we do so, so often. In our country that is so divided along so many lines, it is easy to believe that our way, our thoughts, and what we feel are right and can lead to the sins of pride and self-righteousness. Those sins are revealed in so many ways. We have failed to live as people of grace, truth, and love. You call us to be humble, but we gloat in our pride. You call us to abandon ourselves, but we cling to our own achievements. You invite us to decrease as you increase and to disappear as you become more visible. May we follow your will by living at peace with one another and loving others as you have loved us. However, we find that so very difficult to do. We turn away from you and into ourselves. You command us to shine your light, but we often hide it instead. We are prideful and self-righteous and desire control instead of trusting you to guide our steps. You welcome and receive all who come humbly before you. Yet we approach you far too often with much satisfaction and inappropriate pride. We think more highly of ourselves than we ought to think. We forget Jesus the Christ plain teaching, those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Forgive us and free us from this tyranny of self. We know you love us. We know you will never abandon us, and that you pursue us even when we miss the mark of putting all that Jesus Christ stood for first in our lives, or when we turn away from the relationship you wish to have with us. Thank you for loving us unconditionally. You are always gracious, ready to receive us, and your forgiveness never fails. We trust in your grace and commit it to the lives you would have us live so that others Come to know you and see you. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us today as we have explored the theme, What's With All the Weeds? As we have examined uh, the nature of sin and how it impacts us in life and, and especially when it breaks relationality. Today, uh, we have been celebrating also Father's Day, and uh, that's a very special time. And at the neighborhood church, this is the time of year when we would normally welcome our third graders up to the front of the church and present to each of them a third grade Bible. We're not able to do that uh, together uh, in a worship service, but we have delivered to each of our third graders their very own personalized uh, Bible that they'll be able to keep with them for the rest of their lives. And those people receiving the uh, third grade Bible are Lee Lu Shu, Journey Lewis, James Lagnice, and Ethan Matchison. And so to those four uh, children, we do uh, want to extend a great uh, word of encouragement as they will grow in the word as they uh, discover it more and more in their life as they're exposed to the Bible and through our church school program. So now as you go forth into whatever this coming week holds for you, I hope you'll go knowing that you are truly loved by God, that God's love is unconditional, and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is there to 
reconcile us and restore us in all our relationships, that God's grace and Jesus' love for us are such incredible things that there is nowhere we can go that we cannot be held in that great love. So go knowing that you are always loved by God and go in peace. Amen.